Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your June 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Okay, Sag. Well, are you in a committed partnership? Because this is the month for you. The sun is going to be in this sector for the first 21 days. What is the sun? The sun is our life force. So uh, it's really great to have the sun in the seventh house because it gives uh, warmth to relationships. If there has been any chilliness in your uh, committed partnership, this can be very good for that. It can be healing energy and just to focus on it, you know, focus on your partner. And you're going to have a new moon here on the 13th of June. And um, that can be good for new beginnings in your long-term relationship or committed partnership, whatever it is to you. And even for some people who, let's say, are dating, you may decide to take it to the next level. And this is your engagement time, or this is the time when you move in together. Who knows? Whatever it means for you. Now, Mercury is also going to be in the seventh house until the 12th of the month. So Mercury is that communication, uh, and that could indicate that you have a lot of good communication with your partner. And then it goes into the eighth house, which is the more intense variety of communication. So I see the seventh house, you know, which is ruled by Libra as more of the, what we call the trappings of relationships, which is the marriage, is the uh, status of being in a partnership. But the eighth house is more of the psychological um, connection or the spiritual connection that is below the surface. So it's bearing your soul to another person. And with Mercury there, it might be very verbal, what you're, what you're doing, what you're saying. And um, the eighth house is deep. So it's deep um, talks with a partner. And um, with Venus, Venus is going to be in this eighth house until the 13th. And so Venus can mean that your love is at a deeper level, Sagittarius. You know, Sagittarians, and I'm one too, tend to really like to laugh. We like to uh, be philosophical. But some of us are not necessarily that comfortable with digging deep unless we're uh, approaching it from a philosophical perspective, but you know, sometimes you can hide behind theology and um, your own personal philosophy and kind of over intellectualize it. The eighth house is Scorpio. So uh, if you just look at the two signs, Scorpio and Sagittarius, and you note, if you know any Scorpios and you see the difference between the two of you, you can tell exactly what the contrast is between um, this type of energy. And um, so I personally have the sun in the eighth house in my natal chart. So I do have that bit of Scorpio in me in terms of wanting to delve beneath the surface. And I'm sure that some of you may even have personal planets in Scorpio and may uh, totally resonate with that as well. And you will get that chance of having a more, um, I would say, meaningful romantic connection with Venus in the eighth house. But then on the 13th, Venus goes into the ninth house. And we're talking about more of the, um, the God connection. I want to backtrack just briefly because with Venus in the eighth house and the fact that Venus can bring money, you never know, um, if you have some kind of, um, money tied up with another person, because the eighth house can be other people's money. You may, um, see some kind of profit, uh, with that, it can be inheritance. It can be even a gift, somebody giving you money. Who knows? You know, I'm down for that, aren't you? And uh, and then in the ninth house, 
Venus can in, indicate falling in love with somebody from a different country, from a different culture. Maybe you have the money with Venus in the ninth house to go to college, to um, take a, a long distance trip that you've been wanting to take. Venus is the attractor. So somehow, some way you may attract the money to be able to engage in these activities that I'm talking about. And um, so let's look at Mars retrograde because that is a biggie. And um, this is occurring on March to March on June 26th. And uh, Mars will be in the third house for Sag in the sign of Aquarius. What does the third house represent? Well, the third house represents the internet, other forms of communication, writing, and um, teaching. And it will depend upon individual Sages, how this uh, manifests for you. But remember too, that Mars is our ambition, our drive. And so when Mars is going retrograde, we are questioning that we may be even um, doing some do overs in regards to some ambitions there we are trying to fulfill that relate to internet matters, websites, or what have you. So let's say you have an online business, you may be kind of um, analyzing it and saying, what do I need to do to improve on this, to improve my traffic, to improve uh, the conversion rate of people going to my website and buying something. And you may be doing a lot of kind of um, reworking of that. Because Mars connects with um, siblings, you may be reigniting some kind of a conflict that has to do with them. Now, um, this isn't meant to be negative, but sometimes when we're dealing with other people, in order to fully clear the air, we kind of like um, clash in some way and it doesn't get fully hashed out or resolved. And there's another um, mini battle, if you will, that has to be kind of like ironed out. That's okay. You know, the people that tend to be the most fearful about conflict, to me, sometimes tend to attract it the most. If you know that you are operating with integrity and that you're not trying to like... Um, needlessly uh, upset other people, the fact that something may come up with a family member, like a sibling or a cousin, because the third, I think the third house can also deal with cousins. So if you're in the type of family where your cousins are almost like your siblings, then you may notice at the end between, um, this would be uh, in the early part of the retrograde, maybe the first month or so, I don't know, um, when Aquarius is featured, that you are finding this clash. Actually, Mars is going to retrograde to a late degree of Capricorn. So it will be also impacting at some point, your second house of earned income Sagittarius. But right now we're talking about the third house and, and one of the uh, areas of the third house is uh, sibling uh, situations or um, cousins. And there might be si sibling rivalries that get um, that flare up for some reason. But even if this is part of your um, your uh, like, if you want to call it your destiny, it doesn't, you can always stay above the fray. I mean, this can be kind of like your uh, warning not to get sucked into something. If somebody, if you have a sibling that tries to suck you into something, you don't have to take the bait. And uh, hopefully, if you're uh, listening to this uh, well ahead of time, you won't, you know. And the other thing too, is that this is a general uh, prediction or a forecast. So depending on your degree of Sagittarius, sun or rising, 
it may not um, play out for you in the timeline that I'm uh, providing here. So then, um, well, I'm not going to get into Mars in the second house. I'll probably do that for the July reading. But um, that's happening, and that is going to be through late August that Mars is going to be retrograding. I will say just in general, talking about the second house, is that it will cause you to maybe do some more work on how you earn money. Like um, you may be reviewing the the methods that you use and the the type of how you exert effort into things because that can be Mars too, like your behavior and um, that that can come into play. And you may find that there are um, challenges in terms of like you having to really double down to make things happen. But the rewards are so worth it because when, when Mars goes direct, you may find that you are advancing by leaps and bounds, Sagittarius, and that money is earned more effortlessly um, after the, the transit um, writes itself. So then at the end of the month, there is a full moon in Sagittarius, and this is on the 29th of May. And so obviously, um, for Sagittarians, this is a time of um, completion. And how this affects you may depend upon um, what, whatever it is that you need to let go of. And um, you may find that at the end of May, you are shutting an old skin and you're ready to move into June with some things that you're leaving behind. And whatever doesn't serve you, Sag, definitely take a look at it and uh, be willing to part with it so that you can make room for something better. Okay, that's what I have for you, Sag. If you'd like a private reading, and uh, I'm going to link my needle chart interpretations because they are just pure astrology, and uh, some of you may find that interesting, and they also deal with um, certain astrological trends for you particularly for the next uh, 12 months, um, and I have other types of readings, um, please uh, click the link below. Take care. Bye.